Thank you for your patience, everyone. We had to put the dogs in with Vincent. Everyone's happy now. We'll begin in just a moment. Let us stand and celebrate the Holy Eucharist. Join us in singing. We shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace from God the Father who raised Jesus from the dead be always with you. We remember the words of St. Paul. Praise be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercy, the God of all consolation. He comforts us in our troubles so that we might aid others in their needs with the same consolation that we have received from him. Bless my Father's body with this holy water that recalls the day of his baptism. Those who are baptized into the likeness of Christ's death shall also rise with him to a newness of life. On the day of his baptism, he put on Christ. On the day of Christ's final coming, may he be clothed in endless glory. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow me. And Let us pray. 
Lord our God, you command us to honor father and mother. Have mercy in your compassion on our father and grandfather. Forgive his sins and bring us all to be with him one day in the gladness of eternal glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. <clears throat> they seemed in the view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their growing forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for it before men indeed they be punished, yet it is their hope full of immortality. Chastise a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as a sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. None of us lives for himself, and no one dies for himself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. 
So then, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both dead and the living. We shall all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall give an account to himself to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus arrived in Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem only about two miles away. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even if he dies, shall live. And he who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, and the one who is coming into the world. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Perfect. Jesus Christ is risen. He's risen, risen indeed. indeed. It all started as quite simply as a little trip to St. Louis Rectory for a couple days over the Christmas holidays. But it turned into a longer journey of three weeks that ended not in Pinecrest, but in the kingdom of God. Not for a few days, but, but for all eternity. I'd given Dad a... Uh, 2014 calendar, a planner they called it, to help him organize coming days and months. Last Sunday we realized that God had an alternate plan for Dad's 2014, not for days or months, but for a, a time without end. When the doctor called to tell me Sunday morning that Dad had died, he quickly added, 
Don't worry, he's in God's hands. So strange, the same man who brought me the worst of news as a professional also reminded me of the best of news as a fellow believer. The earthly doctor yielded to the heavenly physician as the one who could really bring the needed and the final and the complete healing. So we gather, as we always do as, as, as Catholics, when we deal with the death of a loved one, we gather for the Eucharist, a Eucharist that celebrates the goodness of God, that celebrates the dying and rising of Jesus and the power of God uh, that is greater than death. Uh, and St. Augustine and his brother, back in the uh, fourth century, uh, they talked about where they would brother bury their mother Monica because they were far away from their home. She advised them, lay this body wherever it may be. But you remember me at the altar of the Lord wherever you may be. So we come again to the Eucharist to remember Dad at the altar. We bring his body to this church uh, where he worshiped for so often in the past couple years, especially when he joined me for, for the holidays. Now, the Eucharist was important in his life, as it is for all of us. Uh, but for him, I guess there were special associations with the Eucharist. Literally, Dad met Mom at the Eucharist. He met her uh, because she played the organ at Fort Benjamin Harrison in Indianapolis during the Second World War, and he sang in the choir. They met to work on the music for the Mass. Their first date was an opera. They often shared the Eucharist together. Their faith in Jesus united them. The only man who ever came between them was Jesus. And his being there gave them the strength in their love that they had for each other for 58 years. For 58 years, they made each other the first in each other's lives. Now, we kids, George and Mark and I, three sons, we knew they loved us tremendously, but we also knew that they placed each other first in their marriage. And that made us even more secure, not less. Those who are closest also know uh, the great love my dad showed in the last years of mom's life. She passed away 10 years ago. She struggled with Alzheimer's. And in the midst of the struggle, as confused as she might be, she knew how much she needed him. And I often heard her say to him, I'm so glad you're with me. I'm so glad you're with me. For 58 years, they never felt bashful saying to each other, I love you. And they came to the Eucharist often together. They used their musical gifts to serve churches in Indiana and in Florida. They were music ministers here in this diocese at St. Lawrence Church, St. Agnes, and, and St. Joseph's. They were daily communicants most of their lives until it was too difficult for, for mom to get to church, but they always prayed together. They had a prayer life they shared with each other. Every night I could hear their prayers. I could hear the rosary responses back and forth. Sometimes mom, dad had to punch mom awake. Holy Mary, Mother of God. <laughs> in the hospital this past week, when his mind was kind of in and out because of all of the drugs he was taking and the pain medicines, this hospital staff wondered what he was mumbling. I knew, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. I'll keep a special connection with Dad every time I celebrate the Holy Eucharist because his name and Mom's name are inscribed at the, the bottom of my chalice. And Mom needed, needle pointed uh, this stole when I was ordained uh, with symbols of death and resurrection, a faith that my parents had, a faith that they were very proud that I would preach as a priest. So we celebrate Dad's faith today, this faith of the Christian people, the faith in the overwhelming love of God that never lets go of us, not even in death. So he sprinkled his body with holy water, saying, recall the day of his baptism when he was joined to Jesus who died and rose. The white garment, cloth on his casket, a symbol of the new life with which God clothes us in baptism and then clothes us even in a greater way. St. Paul says, if you're baptized in Christ, you've put on Christ. So this white cloth covering dad's body Reminds us of God's love and Christ's love that cover us all, whether we're alive or we're dead. Placed his body then in front of the Easter candle that he saw blessed in this church at the Easter vigil. And that 
Easter candle that shines on him and shines on, on all of us. Like St. Paul said, whether we live or we die, we belong to the Lord. A love of God that never lets go of us. The Old Testament reading, souls of the just are in the hands of God. God is the only one. When he says, I love you, it's a perfect love. His love never quits. He loves us in life and even in death. The souls of the just are in the hands of God. And that's good news for all of us. Dad completely trusted the Father's love. I know and understand, I understand how some people have difficulty understanding God as a father because they've had such a difficult experience, perhaps with earthly fathers. Yes, we sons growing up had a different experience. In fact, I always thought that if God was as good as my dad, there'd be no trouble for any of us. Dad believed in Christ, that gospel we heard of resurrection and life. When Martha receives Jesus, she's upset with him, probably shaking a finger at him. If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Why did you let him die? Now, Jesus didn't correct her. He understood she was upset, but he goes on to assure her, you know your brother's going to rise. She says, oh, yeah, I know, in the resurrection on the last day, an event way off in the distant future. But that's where Jesus corrected her a little. And he said, no, I'm the resurrection and the life. Jesus taught Martha and all of us that eternal life does not begin simply after death. It begins in the faith that we have in Christ. Jesus taught Martha and all of us the resurrection is not something that happens to us. It's someone who happens in us. When we have faith in Christ, already we start eternal life. We trust in that father's love as dad did. It's not that dad's love was misplaced when, in fact, uh, God let him die a couple days ago. Uh, because I guess, you know, when God created dad, or any of us, created him 95 years ago almost, or when he created any of us, you know, God never, ever planned we would have to live forever in this world with problems, with suffering, with difficulty. God always has something more for us and for Dad. And that's what we celebrate today, the something more. We celebrate his life, not just the memory of his life and his goodness in life, but we celebrate the new life that God gives him beyond this world. Holy Family Sunday was uh, Dad's last Mass here. Do you remember the wonderful Old Testament reading from Sirach about fathers and sons? He received communion that day in the church, and I brought him Holy Communion at the hospital. He brought me to my first communion in Indiana, and I brought him his last communion in Kendall. Now I know that he and Mom can share in their communion with the Lord at the banquet table of the kingdom. Isn't it true that especially at the Eucharist, we feel a closeness to those who've gone before us? We know they are only a table away because the other end of this Eucharistic table reaches into the kingdom. It's the preface of the Eucharistic prayer. We always say, we join our voices to those of the angels and the saints. So Dad will sing with us again today. He whose music ministry for so many years served the church on earth, he can now take his place with the choirs of heaven. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Together, let us stand as we pray. God, the Father has raised Christ, his Son, from death with confidence. We pray for all of his people, living as well as dead. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For our dad, for Vincent, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for our dad, for Vincent, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us in er on earth, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and the friends of our dad, for Vincent, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may, we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, you are our shelter and our strength. You listen and love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers that we offer for Dad and for all of our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them all of their sins. Grant them the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive, Lord, this sacrifice that we offer you for our Father. Grant him everlasting joy in the land of the living and unite us all with him in the happiness of all of your saints. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Here it seems always our funerals are the strangest. We gather family and friends and in the presence of the remains of the one who's died and and the priest at the altar says, lift up your hearts and let's give thanks. We give thanks even in the face of death because our God is greater than death and what he does for us in his son, Jesus. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere do give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of the blessed resurrection has dawned, so that those who are saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful people, Lord, life is changed, it is not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Vincent, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also your brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to write your faith of mercy in the cell, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, as the as the John of Apostles, the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we make this glory to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. God is the Father of life in this world and the Father of eternal life in his kingdom. Let us pray and sing to this Father. We use the words that Christ our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and Graciously grant her peace and unity in your kingdom. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Now let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace of Christ be with you. Thank you. Peace. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace be with you, Craig. God bless you. Peace be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, guys. Thank you very much. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. To the deacon. Take it to the priest. Take it to the priest.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
body of Christ. Let us pray. <clears throat> May our participation in this heavenly sacrament obtain perpetual light and rest. For our Father Vincent, we pray, O Lord, 
and bring us along with him into the fullness of your heavenly glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good afternoon. Um, I am uh, uh, one of uh, Vincent's sons, uh, George, the youngest of all of the brothers. <laughs> and um, I wanted to share a few things with you uh, briefly about Pop, uh, uh, along the lines of, of what he meant to us and to me as a, as a Christian family and father. Um, Dorothy, my wife always reminds me that it's not what you do on Sunday or what you do outwardly, it's what you do every day. Um, we grew up in a family, as Paul mentioned, where parents prayed a lot. And I share with you that as you look at your family, your parents, your children, and think about what you do with them and for them on an everyday basis. It meant a lot to me, it meant a lot to all of our family. Um, Paul mentioned we heard mom and dad often saying prayers at night, the rosary in particular. Boy, our family prayed all the time. We went to church, we went to novenas, we went to first Sundays. Um, and for those of you of, of my vintage or older, most of us are good. Some of you young folks don't understand. We got all those indulgences uh, <laughs> that I guess they don't grant anymore. So, uh, but we did, and it was a, a family that, that shared a lot through religious beliefs, they shared a lot through actions at church we grew up there. In fact, we were so steeped in it, uh, we gave up one of our own family uh, to the clergy uh, so many years ago as, as Paul has, has joined and you've obviously hopefully reaped those benefits of having him here. Um, probably uh, one of the <coughs> most outstanding things I can remember <coughs> about Pop was his devotion to my mother. He uh, cared for her, did a lot for her, even to the end. And uh, my wife, Dorothy, again reminds me, I hope you do that much for me. <laughs> uh, one of Pop's greatest joy was cooking. And he had, a, uh, 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 any of you, any friends of our family, he had a, a pasta maker, which we would give him attachments for ravioli and little spaghetti and big spaghetti and, and a whole bunch of things. In fact. Uh, just the other day, uh, Paul and Mark and I all came together, and we found one last dish of cannelloni in the freezer. And uh, again, this is a testimony to my older brothers and I, as we had Pop's last dish of cannelloni, which, which was a fitting way that we shared Tuesday night. Still as good ever, still as good as, as the day he made it. Um, Kristen, uh, uh, my daughter, our daughter shared with us a, a story about Pop. Uh, Paul mentioned the stolies wearing mother and dad uh, needle pointed that. Truth be known, Pop did a lot trying to get it finished on time because somehow or other the ordination came before the stole was finished. Uh, so there was a rush to get it and Pop did a lot there. But uh, Kristen was talking to Pop and she shared the story with us last night because um, uh, Pop had also needle pointed some stuff for us. And, he said, Pop, you do such wonderful needlepoint. Have you ever thought about crochet? Pop uh, tilted his head and said, you know, Chris, I think I'm going to do that when I get a little older. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last note here is, is probably a fitting way to, to finish uh, my uh, note. I have a good friend of mine where we live in the Potomac, Maryland area. And uh, I mentioned to Jack, who knew Pop, as he had visited us many times at Potomac. Pop had passed away Sunday, and uh, Jack, being an Irishman, and full vibrato, says, you know, George, he says, show me where, where is the place that I can sign up for that? 95 years, uh, full facilities, full faculties till the end, living a good life, a warm family around him. Where do I sign up for that? And uh, Jack, you're probably right. Where do we all sign up for something like that? Um, <clears throat> the last note is, uh, 
when we call Pop, and as we lived uh, in Maryland, we often didn't get a chance to see him as much as we liked to, but Pop was always upbeat, had a, always had a good attitude, what's going on. He, he, if you didn't call him on a regular basis, he would call you. And Pop's always finished his conversations in a very upbeat way by saying, bye for now. And in fact, if I can make this technology work, I'd like to share a message that Pop left me and I, and I kept. You guys are getting along here. You had a lot of weather up there, and I was just sitting here wondering about the heat and about all the rain and the stuff that you've had to get your share. Talk to you later. Take care. Hope everything's okay. Bye for now. So, Pop, bye for now. My name is Mark. Uh, first of all, we want to say as a family, thank you to so many of you for being with us to comfort us in our hours of need. Archbishops, thank you for your time and for your inspirations over the years. To all the members of the clergy who are here, who many of you knew our father for many years. Cecilia, thank you for the wonderful Ave Maria. Uh, Dad used to sing that in the many parishes that Paul talked about. Uh, it, it is inspiring to hear that wonderful, wonderful Ave Maria. Thank you, Cecilia. And to all of you, the members of the family, the community of St. Louis, thank you for welcoming our family as part of yours uh, thank you for all that you do for our brother Paul. Uh, we tried the best we could to provide to you an outstanding man, an individual, and priest. Uh, sometimes I'm not sure, George and I think we did that good of a job. A few thoughts that I wrote down that I would like to share with you, and I hope to not burden you with the pain I felt in my heart as I wrote these words. If, if I can't, then our son John Paul will help me out. Time puts a perspective on things for all of us, that the only things of true value in our lives are the people we love. For none of us, none of us, can take any of what we own with us when we die. For us, our parents, the time we had with them, the many, many years, was a gift from God, and we were richly blessed. Blessed with our mother for more than 55 years, blessed with our father for more than 65 years time, the time we do have, it is indeed the most precious jewel. Our father was proud of his family. He was proud of his sons. And with our mother, they cherished their six grandchildren, all who are here today. He raised us to be proud raised us to be strong men. And although he has now left us and left us with big shoes to fill, we will try to carry on his legacy. Our parents did three things. They loved, as Paul said in George, they often prayed and they shared. They shared whatever they had. We hope to instill in our families the same values that our parents instilled in us. To dad, his family was the most important thing, except for mom. 
Dad gave us a sense of security, a sense of comfort, provided us with a loving home. We were lucky to have parents who cared so much. My dad was a caring and sensitive man. His mission, his ministry, was to be of service to others. He always had to work hard for everything he had, yet he would always share whatever he had. The greatest value that I remember from our father is what he taught us, that it is better to give than to receive. It was his mission to provide comfort to others. Just as George in the recording played, he was always positive, he was always upbeat. He always felt it his mission to provide comfort to others. He gave of his time and his talent all his life. He served his church through decades of musical ministry, as you heard. He served his country in the Army over a four-decade time frame. He served his Italian heritage when he could, as he did in World War II, when a little-known story, uh, his role was, he spoke fluent Italian, and his role was to work with Italian prisoners of war, men who he said were in, in, in Italian, his paisans, these were his brothers in blood. These were his countrymen. He served our country in a way, but at the same time, serving his heritage. And still, even in his 90s, he worked to serve others. He would say to Arlene and I, I have to go down and help with the old people. And I said, well, well, Dad, I said, are, are you part of that group somewhere? And he goes, well, you know, and, and this is what he said. He said, I hope I die before I get old. <laughs> he said, I just want to help others, and I don't want to be a bother to anyone. You see, our dad was a simple man, but yet in our eyes, he was a great man. We will try to live up to his standards and his examples. Our father may have left this world, but his words of wisdom and all that he taught us will not leave Paul or George or I. My brothers and I will keep him, him with us daily as we remember all that he and our mother taught us. In his last days, we ask him, Pop, how are you doing? And in his positive say, way, he said, I'm doing all right. He did that to comfort us. When we were little, he held our hands to comfort us. And days before he died, he was still providing that comfort. He never stopped giving. He was a great man without ever seeking greatness at all. As you know, Pop had an Italian heritage. And as George said, goodbye, Dad, goodbye for now. So in English, we say, goodbye, Father. May you go with God. In Espanol, we say, adios, Padre, y vaya con Dios. And in Italian, adio, Papa. Via con Dio. Via con Dio. And now Andrea, our daughter, to salute her grandfather, she became an Italian citizen and is learning to speak Italian and did so so that she could converse with her grandfather who still spoke Italian to the day that he died. Buongiorno. 
Mio nonno è di Sicilia. La nostra famiglia è molto orgogliosa di questo. Ho imparato a parlare italiano solo per pap. My grandfather is from Sicily. Our family is very proud of this, and as my dad just said, I learned to speak Italian just for pop. Pop ama la sua famiglia. E mi piace parlare e scrivere di lui in italiano naturalmente. Pop loved his family, and I loved to, to talk and write to him in Italian. Chiamo pop e lo dico, ciao ciao pop, come va? E pop dice sempre, molto bene, sempre. Mai così così, mai non c'è male. I would call Pop and say, how are you? And he always said, very good. Never so-so or not so bad. Always very good. Una cosa Pop piace molto, cibo. Tutto e due, mangiare e cucinare. Lo sento ora, mangia, mangia. Matteo, mangia, mangia. One thing Pop really liked was food. He loved to eat it and he loved to cook it, and he could never tell us to eat enough of it. Matthew, all the time, Matthew would be standing in the kitchen and Pop would go, Matthew, go eat something, go eat something, Matthew. E triste mi figli non sanno mio nonno fantastico. Mi mancera Pop per sempre. Ti amo, a presto. It's sad my children will never know my amazing grandfather. I'll miss Pop forever. I love you. Until next time, bye for now. My dear friends, we are experiencing a wonderful celebration of life, a wonderful celebration of family, and the proper way to celebrate death. What a wonderful example this gentleman has brought and this ceremony has brought to our understanding of who we are and what we're all about. I'm sure Father Paul and his brothers uh, were behind all of this, but uh, the real um, proponent of all of this are his dear parents. And on this occasion, I would want to extend my condolences to you, but for someone or a family that's been gifted for 95 years with such a wonderful gift, it can't last forever. Even though it will last forever, at some point uh, that separation comes to all of us but what a wonderful gift you have given to all of us who are here today uh, in your dear father's death. And as we celebrate this, I want to thank you and your father for giving your son, your brother, to serve in the church. And not just for giving Paul to the church, but also for supporting him. In the 16 years since I have been Archbishop here, on every occasion I went to St. Bartholomew, always special occasions, special events that I went, his parents were always there. They were always there, and not just there, they were proudly there. And I often reflect on how wonderful a support that has to be for a son who is a priest, to see that his parents have not just given him to the church, but have supported him in every uh, effort that he makes as he um, plays out his years of service to the people of God. What a wonderful um, example that is to all of us. And to you, parishioners and friends, you become a very important means of support for our priests. And I hope that you will give them that kind of support because they need that. And to our priests who are here, um, don't forget that you need the support of your brothers and you need to give 
support to your brothers. That's so very, very important. I'm always grateful for the wonderful services that Father Paul has given to the Archdiocese, and I thank you um, this, af this afternoon uh, for the, the good priestly ministry that you have, in, you, have, you have shown in your years as a priest in the Archdiocese. May God bless all of you. When uh, I point this out at, at funerals, especially when the last parent dies, when the last parent dies, as you know, something happens to a family. Something serious happens to the family. And obviously, in the case of this gentleman, uh, something seriously happens to the family. And I always caution them, and I wonder what's going to happen from here on. Who takes the leadership? Where does it come from? How does everything that he handed on, that they handed on, uh, now gets handed on. Well, just listening <laughs> to everything today, I think uh, this family is in very good hands and because of the very good example of the wonderful parents uh, that brought them about. God bless you all. Continue now with the, uh, the final commendation. And right after the commendation, as the procession leaves, we'll go outside. She heard uh, Dad was a uh, colonel in the mil military police. Kind of an interesting thing. He was into the arts and music and military police. And so kind of an interesting combination of many, many things. And so we'll go out to the rotunda and for the, uh, then final, the, uh, the military salute. And then finally, after that, everyone is invited over to the uh, uh, family center uh, for refreshments, for uh, lunch. I want to thank everybody who prepared the lunch. I want to thank everyone who worked on the liturgy. certainly want to thank everybody who has, has come here today. Uh, thanks to all of you who really made my dad feel at home in the, in the years that he was here, always with me on holidays. He felt very much at home here uh, at St. Louis. Uh, last night we had a wonderful celebration. Archbishop Rivas led the Eucharist at St. Bartholomew where he had been a member for, for 27 years. And also, it was a good, he had a good experience of family there. And thanks to the Archbishop for coming from the Caribbean and for Archbishop Papalor for being here and, of course, all of our brother priests. And special thanks to uh, Father Bijou and Father Freddie. They've been very good support. And Father Mike uh, Kish being a very good support for me. And I want to thank all of you for being here as we uh, uh, celebrate our faith in God and give thanks. Together, let's stand as we pray. With faith and hope in eternal life, we prepare to bury our Father's body in his earthly human imperfection. We pray with confidence to God who gives life to all things, that he will raise him up to the perfection and the company of the saints. May God give him a merciful judgment. May Christ the Good Shepherd lead him safely home to be at peace with God the Father. May he be happy forever with all of the saints in the presence of our eternal King. As we commend him to that new life with the saints, let us pray as we sing. Father, we commend our Father who has died. We are confident that with all who have died in Christ, he will rise again to live with Christ forever. We thank you for all of the blessings that you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Lord, listen to our prayers and open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another 
with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our Father forever in your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I got the genius. 